What's up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Philly to Detroit Boxing. We got two very special guests on with us. We got Ashley, Loran, and Day. What's going on, y'all? What's up? What's up? Nothing much. We appreciate y'all for hopping on. But really, you know, obviously, uh, I wanted to have y'all along because I obviously, you know, being from Detroit and being from Michigan, I've seen y'all all around at all the events and whatnot. Uh, but what really got you, I guess for a question for you, Ashley, what really got you into boxing? You know, because I've seen you doing refereeing at some events. Uh, I've seen you recently, you just did your first ring, announce, uh, ring announcing job, I guess you could call it. Uh, so what got you into the sport? What made you love the sport? Um, so really, I mean, Day Day, for sure, because he started boxing. I've always been a combat uh, sports fan, though. But when Day Day started boxing, we actually didn't even plan on it to be, like, competitive. He started off at Mash Gym in Redford, and it was pretty much just like a beginner's class where they just taught how to throw the punches. Mm -hmm. There was no major sparring. Um, he did jujitsu as well. So once he was like, no, Mom, I want more, we ended up going to Super Bad Academy with Tony Harrison, LJ, uh, Coach Bass, Coach Al. Shout out to all of them. And, I mean, we haven't even been in the game two years yet. And I just fell in love as much as he fell in love. And it's like, you know, being a mom in the sport, a woman in the sport, a lot of times a lot of doors aren't open for you in the same way. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a, it's a tough sport. It's a hardcore sport. It's brutal. So, as a girl, they're like, get your ass out of here. You know what I'm saying? But for yeah. me, it was like I wanted to be involved whatever I could. And. It was like, okay, so let me become an official. That was the first thing I did. So I got into officiating because I really wanted to understand, like, what are these judges looking for? There was a fight he had, and I didn't understand why he lost. So I'm like, let me get behind the scenes and see, like, what are we doing wrong? You know what I'm saying? So I got into that. Um, that led to, the, just like I said, the judging. Um, I would definitely, the refereeing, the ring announcer thing. I just did that at a, our own show, the Super Bad Show. That was amazing. And um, I'm really looking forward to just progressing in the sport. Like, I just, I love it. But what's yeah. it like, uh, you know, being at Tony Harrison's gym? Obviously, everybody, every pro that comes to Michigan steps through Tony Harrison's gym. You know what I mean? Obviously. So what is it like, you know, being under his wing, obviously being in a, uh, in a gym with Tony and LJ? Uh, it's great. Like, it's a real good experience. I feel like Tony being there, like, and – inspires kids like I feel like it inspires kids to want to box or to want to learn how to do something and I feel like they look up to Tony and LJ and Bass and Al all of them like like if something's going on at home like they look it up to them as like their father figure at the gym it's definitely it's definitely a family yeah. here. like it's very family oriented like those guys they're so dedicated like they love what they do and it shows through their work. Like, yeah. for one, I'm just so thankful, like, even to have LJ as his trainer. Like, that right there to me, like, you can't tell me it's a better trainer in the world. And I'm not saying it's not a million great trainers, but the bond that they have, the fighter-coach relationship, I mean, it's amazing. What kind of what kind of sparked the interest to even get into boxing? Like, what I always like, I always like fighting. Uh, like, I always <laughs> like, I don't know. I just like fighting. But you know what? He always, he was, like, he liked to fight. But Dede, like, sorry, I'm going to put you out there a little bit. He had asthma. He was chubby. He was one of them kids that just sat in the house on the video game. <laughs> and I got tired of it. And I was like, no, nah, you're going to do something with yourself. And beyond that, he would go to school. And he never got bullied. But people would try him. And he's got a mouth on him. And he would pop off back. And I'd be like, well, OK, the type of mouth you got, somebody going to swing on you. So you got to know what to do. <laughs> when they want to take your head off because you got all the jokes and you cooking people. So that's kind of where it started. And it just, like I said, it just developed like that. Like his skill mm. level from a year and a half ago to now is just like, I mean. Crazy. I've been, I've been seeing it too. It's crazy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and uh, when you said that uh, he lost the fight, you just wanted to know why. Is it is that kind of because of his style? Do he got a more, pro, more of a pro style? Because, you know, in the amateurs, they kind of want you to go 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 and, and the pro style some people like to set up their shots pick their yeah. shots and things like that you know you know it, it depends i would say there's definitely been a fight that he lost because he did wait too long so that that goes into like a style thing because day day does like to pick shots but that particular fight the one that i was like what happened he, he was just out of the target zone so they were you know they fought in the pocket and day day's punches were more on the outside the other kid was straight up the middle 
And that's basically what did it because the point system is a 10 point must. One person must get 10, the other person must get nine, eight, or seven, but we don't really score sevens. So that's like a slap in the face. A seven is like the fight should have stopped. The referee should have stopped it. So when you look at that 10, nine, and it's so close, that's where you go off of who had more quality punches, who was leading the fight, who was in the correct target zone. And I mean, as much as it looks even, it's like he was really, he was on the outside, the other kid was on the inside. But as a parent, I didn't understand that. I'm like, what you mean? Like, they just banged it out the whole fight. <laughs> no, definitely. And then how, how excited are you to go to Ireland, man, and go and compete over there? Oh, oh, I'm real excited. Um, I'm excited to go to Ireland and get my get back because I let that kid beat me, but he only beat me because he was overwhelming me with all his punches, but it ain't going to happen again. Yeah, he was he was a little tall. He was a little tall. <laughs> yeah, he was like 5'8". Do you automatically fight the same guy? Um, I don't know. I think I might. Yeah, you know, there's a chance that he will. There's a chance. It, he fights at 95 yeah. pounds, so we'll see what they got for him. Oh, so do you basically expect the other guy to meet you, kind of meet you in the tournament at the top yeah. continent? That's why yeah, you I, that? I, I expect to fight him, yeah. All right. I, I'm expecting. That's what he wants, though. It's crazy. He, like, <laughs> we, he don't never back down from a challenge. And it's like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say his record because we ain't ashamed of that shit. We 7-7 seven and seven right now. We half and half. We 50%. Eight, eight. Okay, eight and seven. I'm sorry. We just had a fight. He right. We won this last weekend. But the thing is, we have accepted nothing but hard fights. Like, LJ pushes Day Day. He puts them up against the top competitors, people that outweigh him on experience, size, everything. Like, coming up this weekend on the 21st, we're actually going to be fighting the number one ranked kid in the country. So, we going to, you know, take it to the battlefield with him right before we leave and go to Ireland. So, it'll be a good warm-up. We're... And how is it, how is it for for you basically as a parent basically having to see your kid in a fight basically see other other kids trying to knock your kid head off basically? You know what? It was so hard in the beginning. Like when I said <laughs> we had days in the gym that we cried together, and I damn near wanted to fight the coaches. Like, what is y'all doing? But that's number one why they tell you to get the hell out if you don't want to. You can't deal with it. Get out. Which I understand now. In the beginning, I didn't understand, but I understand. But I really, like, after watching him spar for so long, I realized, like, his defense is pretty good. He can take a hit. He's got a chin on him. And I'm like, at the end of the day, I got to just trust the process. Like, that's what it really came down to, was trusting the process with the coaches, trusting the hands that he was in, and having confidence in him. <laughs> and do you uh, – there is a question for you. Do you have any long-term plans, like, in terms of trying to get a gold medal, or are you – trying to oh, stay in the amateurs yeah. long want to want to go to the olympics and once i go to the olympics uh i'm wishing for a gold medal but if i don't get a gold medal it's all right and then i'm planning to go pro after that all right and do you have a, a favorite promotional company where you like yeah when i turn pro i'm, I'm gonna holla at them oh yeah i want to go to top rank <laughs> yes sir. i knew that yeah. was <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah we hoping the Olympics still hold boxing, but you know, by the time it's your time, you know what I mean. We hearing that they could take possibly take it out uh, of the Olympics, so by the time it's your time to go, I'm hoping they still even have it. Yeah, for but, real. No. Worries. Yeah, and then who are some of your favorite fighters? They who you like to watch and get some game from? Uh, Shakur Stevenson, Bud Crawford, um, Keyshawn Davis. Mm. Tony Harrison, of course. Um, who else do I watch? Who do we watch a lot? Can't forget Tank. Oh, Tank, yeah. Um, I feel like there's one more. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I like Anyway. I like Stefan Fulton. Mm. Yeah, so dog. That's it. That's it, really. <laughs> is it cause is it cause of your style that you like watching those guys? Cause I, them everybody kind of like boxers, you know, kind of pick their shots. Yeah, that's them. why I like them. Cause I don't really like like I bang, but I don't really like banging. Like it's not it's not how I fight. Are you trying to box? Right. Yeah. Is that kind of like is this situational based on who you fighting kind of thing? Yeah, like. 
this weekend, like, I'm going to press forward because he's taller than me, and I'm going to go to the body. But, like, a kid my size, all I got to do, is, especially because my arm's longer than most of the kids I fight. So all I got to do is sit back and box and keep my distance and right. that. Yeah, it's crazy because when he actually gets to fight kids his size, he makes it look so easy because normally we're fighting, like, in the gym, we're fighting kids, you know, 10 pounds out of our weight class. We're fighting kids taller. We're sparring with kids that are really making him work. Like, I mean, shout out to all the talent. Like, you know, Team Cartel, they come through a lot. He gets to spar with some of the best out of Team Cartel. Um, Dark Side Gym, they got some great fighters. Uh, Hamza Mohammed, we get work with him sometimes, you know, like, even and then kids in our own gym. I mean, we got D-Ray Dixon. We got uh, Gary Pearson. We got some great athletes. And they're all a little bigger than him. So they, you know, they, they touch him up a little bit. But he can hang. And once he starts hanging and throwing back, I mean, he's learning. So when he gets with them kids his size, it's like, this is nothing. Right. Um, Ashley, this is a question for you. What What's going on? With, uh, I know you obviously just announced that. You know, you just got the new studio space. You got the podcast coming up. What's going on with that? Could you tell us a little bit about that? Oh yeah, so I um I got seconds out with Ashley, as you can see right here. Um, I'm gonna be starting off my episodes. Hopefully, this next week I have a very special first guest already planned. Um, just gonna line up the time slot with him, and I'll be rolling. Um, you know, previously to have my own podcast, I was on a radio show, a boxing radio show that's based here out of Detroit. Um, shout out to the radio show um, for kind of, you know, introducing me to it. Honestly, you know, I never really, I, I'm online a lot. I post a lot, you know, but I, I really didn't necessarily think like, let me do this. But once I got into it, and it's not to spite anybody because just like you reached out to me, like, hey, you know, come on my podcast. Let's, mm-hmm. let's talk. You know, there there is no competition. That's how I look at it. I don't do it to compete with anybody. Yeah. I don't do it. I'm not trying to take any ideas because who invented interviewing? Not one person. But Mm -hmm. it's just like, I love it. I love being involved in the sport. And what I've realized is I kind of like being on the media side or even like the announcing side a little more than the judging side. And it's only because I'm very animated. I'm very passionate. And I want to yell and scream Mm -hmm. and congratulate. And as a judge, you got to be really (laughs) straight face. So I do enjoy judging the fights. Don't get me wrong. But I have like this whole other side. If you were at the first fight, you probably heard me a new way. People probably thought I was beefed out with the whole gym because I was ready to tear it down. Uh, So yeah, I I turn up when it comes to my gym babies. But no, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to um, getting some interviews. I'm going to be doing some stuff in studio with people local. I'm also going to be traveling trying to get some stuff on the road, um, just really seeing where I can get to. And another reason for it is just to help network for him, too. You know, like, boxing is kind of a sport mm-hmm. of who you know, as well as your skill, mm-hmm. but it's who you know. Like, what doors you can open up, what doors you can get through, and who can see you and that skill. And then they vouch for you. Like, oh, hey, you know what I'm saying? We got this kid from the city, or we got this young lady from out of town. Like, that's how they get recognized. Hey, are y'all plugged in? I see at uh, all the fights, man. Y'all get all the big pictures, man. Y'all man, in. that's this one. He's my plug. I promise you. Like it's like <laughs> everywhere we go, he he's like he's celebrity status already. He just he talks to people like he doesn't get starstruck. You know what I'm saying? It's just like I belong here. Right. Like that's his aura, and it's crazy because I'm more introverted to be honest, and he just really kind of pulls it out of me. So mm. it's it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is there anything in the boxing game that, that caught you off guard that you didn't like that was like, yeah, I'm going to make sure I watch out for that? Mm, no, nothing really. Not really, okay. Nothing for you. I'd say on my half, like, not as a fighter. It's a dirty game. It's mm-hmm. a real dirty game. Yeah. Like, And it's a dirty game in amateurs as well as when you get into pros. And the politics just get heavier as you get older and into the pros. But, I mean, that's like... That's a whole another episode. The beyond the behind the scenes of amateur boxing <laughs> for real, like, cause it's a dirty game. And then even like with fights, like when we say we got an open fighter and we're presenting this fighter to other gyms, it's oh well, how many fights did they have and who did they beat? And like, who cares? Is you gonna fight us or not? Mm-hmm. These are kids. They ain't gonna hurt each other. These are kids. Like, let them get the experience. But it's just you know the politics. That's mm-hmm. what I would say, the politics. Because the reason I asked that, we had a lot of Olympians on our show, and even 
as successful as they was in the amateurs, they'll still tell you, like, I hated the amateurs. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's, it's different, but it can be fun. And that's like, even with the record, we don't get caught up in the record. A lot of people are like, oh, you got this many losses or this or that. Like, yeah, but if you read my resume, well, not my resume, but you read that <laughs> resume, like, his shit speak numbers. Like, look at the people he done fought. Like, his third fight at Golden Gloves was against a kid, or your second fight, actually. Your second fight at Golden Gloves was against a kid that had been boxing his whole life, and he had been boxing for four months. He faced a southpaw at that, and he did a damn good job. He didn't get the win, but he did pretty good for someone that is just entering the sport. So, and, I, I mean, we look at those things as, like, there's no reason to feel like, ooh, I lost. No, I learned, and the next person that I fought, I was able to adapt to that, and I used what I learned, and I'm just only getting better, like... And he's 12 years old, you know what I'm saying? We got so much time. If we had some fights that just passed. Obviously, we had obviously the fight of the generation. Uh, what we what we thought it was Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence. Uh, oh, did that God. go like y'all planned? Did y'all see that happening? Yes, I knew. I knew Bud. Look, we was team. We was team Bud Crawford all the way. I uh, <laughs> I was telling people stop sleeping on Bud. I actually wish I would have bet some people that were very Earl Spence headstrong, I but knew Bud was gonna knock yeah. But I I didn't think it was gonna be that bad. I'm a, I didn't think it was gonna be that bad. I knew Bud was gonna beat him, but I didn't expect that. I ain't gonna lie. I had I had Spence. I had Spence. I was I was leaning we towards both had Spence. Uh, <laughs> off resume one, and and just. I just seen so many people that's way lesser than Spence give Bud a good fight. So I'm like, I'm like, I see guys that's nowhere near on Spence level can win four or five rounds against Bud. There's no way my man can't get an extra two that this guy can win four rounds that he nowhere near as good as Spence. Yeah. But, you know, but what I say Bud did, I feel like he he saved his greatest performance for his greatest opponent. And it, it really happens that way because when it's your greatest opponent, it's too it's too good to have your greatest performance because y'all both elite, but that's what he pulled off. Yeah, he did. And I, I personally, I don't want to see the rematch. Yeah, I don't I don't really think it's going to be too much different. And it's, I think Earl Spence deserves to go down as one of the greatest fighters. So it's no knock on him. But I would love to see him just go spend the rest of his time with his family. He's young. Like, <laughs> go be with your family. Like, enjoy your life. Like, you got a beautiful family. You had a great career. I mean, you lost to somebody that was great. I don't take that, like, that he sucks or anything. Like, and you stood in there and fought. He did more than Charlo just did with Canelo. Yeah, that Charlo. Yeah, definitely. Earl Spencer, that was, you I was that's a warrior about right that there. Too. No, yeah, Charlo fucking power. Yeah, I ain't. I should have stayed at <laughs> Oh, Man, I was disappointed in Charlo, but I... I had Canelo in that one too. I ain't gonna hold you up. My thing is, yeah, if a ball no, couldn't no. knock Canelo out at 175 pounds, Charlo ain't knocking Canelo out. So you gotta outbox Canelo. Yeah. You ain't knocking him out. I thought Charlo was gonna at least try to outbox, and he ain't even try to do that. I thought he so too. Do nothing, man. And he was moving <laughs> good. He just didn't put the punches together. Like his feet. He was doing good on the feet, like I feel like, but he just was moving only, like he wasn't putting nothing. But up. even with the feet, I mean, Charlo was, I mean, Canelo was cutting him off so bad, like he was like stalking yeah. him slow motion. It was just okay, okay. He and didn't he even have no to do threat, much. No type of Canelo yeah. style of fighting is so crazy. I feel like he just big as hell. But his style of fighting, like, I don't feel like, like, if he was the same size as everybody on the pound for pound list, I think almost everybody beat him because I don't think you could hook your way to a win. Like, you can't hook your way to an elite win if y'all the same size. Like Because right now, to me, Canelo just going to come with the heart, the high guard, hook mm -hmm. to the head, hook to the body, and he's going to do that over and over all 12 rounds. Yeah. And I feel like if he was the it same worked, size, he size that wouldn't do it. Like, but he he, cracked. he cracking. Where is it? <laughs> Dave, that's why it works. Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, what, what's some stuff you like to do outside of boxing, Dave? Like, uh. Go outside. Sometimes I go outside or I just, I don't know, I be chilling in the house really on my phone watching boxing, doing something like that. Oh, yeah. He lives boxing. Like, you get a couple hours of video game out of him. He goes mm -hmm. outside, plays with friends, but it's boxing. Boxing, 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 boxing. Everywhere oh, we go. Walking to the right grocery nice. store is shadow boxing. Like, I'm surprised he ain't throwing punches <laughs> at me right now, for real. Like, he been sitting still a long time without throwing a jab. 
<laughs> no, I'll be doing that too. I'll be it'd be an urge. You just gotta do it. <laughs> yeah. I already know how you feel. I was gonna ask you, Daddy, when you seen the uh basically just leading up to the Spencer Bud fight and just how big the moment was, like was you watching that moment in your head? Like I like I can't wait till I'm in that position. Yeah, like like I can't wait till I get on top rank or showtime and I'm a pay per view fight and everybody watching me. Because that was that was a that was a big fight. We we was actually in Vegas, so we went out there for uh for the yeah, fight. We went out there. The atmosphere was just was just amazing. Like you could definitely tell. Yeah, them. it was crazy. Man, I bet. And you know, I think the other experience we had like that, we've been to uh we saw Clarissa Shields at Little Caesars Arena. That yeah. was amazing. We saw Alicia Baumgartner at the Masonic Temple. That was amazing. But seeing Jared Anderson in Toledo. Yeah, yeah. Because that was a main event. They did the lights. I mean, being up under them lights, he got to like really see and feel like a real intro, like top rank intro where they went yeah. all out. I mean, he was with the ring girls. He was with the top yeah. rank camera crew. He was with media. <laughs> he done dapped up and took a picture with every fighter. He done tapped Jared's glove on the way to the ring. He, he, took, a he took a picture. He met Shakur. He called out Shakur, told him they're going to be in the ring together one day. He coming for that weight class. <laughs> I mean, that experience right there was everything. Yeah, Shakur might be a little too old. He's going to be, he gonna be <laughs> I mean, too, but Shakur, he gonna be old, he, he 20, 20, what, 2, 23? Oh, 26. Okay. You tw- ah, he'd be, it'd be like how packed y'all is now. His record yeah. be coming back to tighten up the young dog. <laughs> <laughs> Get an exhibition in for some big money or something. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and I was going to ask you, Daddy, who are some of the best kids that push you, that push you to your limit, bring the best out of you? Um, well, in my gym, my teammate Ray, mm-hmm. my teammate Deuce. And like the gems that just come through, I'm sure y'all know KK. Um, yeah. Kill Harvey, um, right. Tonka, yeah. um, the twins, the twins, we and Snatch, you, okay. you sure and you mirror from Cartel. Um, who was she far with? Smart. You know what? Dark Side's got another really good fighter. I'm gonna shout oh, him out. His name Issa. Yeah, Issa. He uh he's in the same weight class as Day Day. We've sparred with him. It's been a little minute, but he's really picked his game up. So we're looking forward to sparring with him again too. You like sparring with them t- them high level guys? Yeah, like- I like sparring with people that are better than me or the same skill as me. I I don't like sparring with people that aren't better than me because it's not making me no better. Or, right, kind of like heard. pointless at that point. You just whip my beat up on them. Right, <laughs> but sometimes you know he does. He'll spar with people that aren't like. Quite at his level because he's trying to help them, so he'll work with people yeah. as well. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a ladder. Thing what you're trying to do. And you can right. work on defense things like that. You could take more risks to see where you're, since you're fighting yeah. somebody who's not on your level. But yeah, uh, sure. have you guys had a chance to uh, go to a nationals yet, or not yet? Yeah, I went to nationals in August. Uh, so the junior national Golden Gloves. We were there. Was that your first? Um, your first nationals? Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was our first national. Um. How we felt a little short, but we're back in December, so we actually got the rest of our year pretty, like, caked up. October 21st, like I said, we're fighting the number one kid in the country. Um, October 26th, he'll be fighting in Belfast, Ireland. October 28th, he'll be fighting in Liverpool, England. Then when he comes home, November 4th, we're down in St. Louis. Um, come November 10th, we're in Cleveland. And November 19th, Super Bad is throwing another show right at the Inkster Rec Center, so we'll be back and. We leave December first to go to nationals in Louisiana. Yeah, that's only oh, up. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a bad basically a little tour. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for real. That's why I said it's like you man. It's going to the nationals. How was that moment for you? Because you know, amateur boxing, basically if you if you go to the nationals, that's like the that's like the outside of winning a gold medal becoming a this time national champion. That's like the top. Oh, yeah, it was it it was cool. Like, I liked it. I wasn't nervous or anything like that, mm-hmm. though. You definitely yeah. like you belong, and you definitely can't wait to come back. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can't wait to go in December. Yeah, super bad. We're going down thick. We got about 12 boxers we're taking down there. Um, All the coaches yeah, yeah. are coming. I mean, we got, on top of the squad we've already had, we got people who are coming back. You know what I'm saying? They might have took a little break or have been training. So we, 
we got a squad right now. Like I'm telling you, we are already out there, but y'all are really gonna be hearing about super bad. We coming to take over. No, yeah, I've been Man. I've been trying to see which uh national competition I'm gonna go to because I actually trying to go to one. Yeah, yeah, you know, um in December it's the Olympic trials along with the national qualifier. Yeah, so where, that one's gonna be lit. At? Where that's gonna be located at? Uh Lafayette, Louisiana. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. That's December second through the ninth. Oh. And then when you, when you fight when you fight them kids from other countries, uh, like you know when you fight the the kids from Ireland, do you do you feel a difference in the style like from kids from that you fight here? And do you feel a difference in that type of style? It's different because like they fight different. Like they fight on they bounce and they move around a lot with they jab and one twos and they real they all real tall for some reason. <laughs> The whole Ireland team looked like the Monstars when they got off the bus. We looking like, where's the little one that you gonna fight? Like, one of them gotta be like... They about to go <laughs> but, but they came to fight. They they brought a fight. They they really did. They brought a fight. It was a great event. Was it kind of like that Bivol style, how he kind of be in and out with his yeah. one-twos? It was kind of like, but the kid I fought wasn't like the All he did was come forward with his one-twos and just like try to flutter me like yeah he realized that he could use his length so he kind of just kept his arms out yeah and they they kind of like i think he got a little frustrated he probably ain't gonna say it but if he gets hit with a good shot sometimes he'd be like okay now i'm gonna bang you back like his game plan goes out the window a little bit and i think that's kind of what happened with ireland because he could have definitely outskilled him but he was like, nah, shoot i don't care if i'm seven inches shorter than you i'm gonna stand toe to toe and i'm gonna bang with you so it was like yeah. the heart was there, but me on the sideline was like, "Stop banging with them! What are you doing? Like, just back up." <laughs> and is it is it hard not to basically to stay to stay disciplined? This question for you today, basically to stay disciplined when you is got a fighter's mentality because like Floyd do say the square is is hit and not get hit, but this this still a fight at the end of the day. So it's for you to decide that this is what you want to do for a living. It's kind of like in you. So is it hard to stay disciplined and kind of no. be like, no, I want to fight? It's like, it's hard, but it's not hard. Like, because I, well, I haven't been doing it for that long, but I've been disciplined from the start. So it's not really hard for me to stay disciplined. I mean, he counts his calories, what he's eating. He's 12 years old with a calorie counter on his palm. <laughs> I mean, he's doing better than me. Like, you know, and... I knew he was. He loved the sport when he first started. Like I said, he had asthma, so he wasn't trying to run. He wasn't trying to do nothing. But we started at super bad in February, so it was kind of like it was freezing, and they run outside. Like they run outside in all degree weather, from the burning hot, humid day to the coldest, below zero day. And when he was out there in his coat, running through the snow, could barely breathe. I was like, oh no, he loves this because he ain't trying to quit. Yeah. He's pushing himself to keep going. Like no matter how bad a sparring session has ever been or how hard a workout, he has never once come home and been like, I don't want to do this. For sure, yeah, because I, I be seeing him out there, man. It be freezing outside. They just be having a coat and ski mask on out there running. They don't care about none of that. Yes. <laughs> they be out there. Yes, they do. No, All but that's other. dope, though, to have you, you know, get that experience. You know what I mean? You're able to get that experience from a former world champion, you know, like Tony Harrison. And then, you know, obviously, when I was down there, too, he'd be in the gym. He's very present in the gym, man. He is in there yeah. every day. You know what I mean? So that's dope for y'all to be able to see him and get that, you know, that experience with him. That's dope as hell for sure. Yeah, we got Tony. And, you know, Alicia be through the gym, too. Alicia Baumgartner. So yeah, Alicia, yeah. They yeah. Yep. Um, Clarissa Shields comes down time to time, so it's like we get to really see like some top notch, top level fighters. Oh, that's definitely good. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Undisputed sure. release here. I about to say, yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Definitely awesome. But I have to say, touching on something from earlier, I don't know why it just popped in, but my last little gig is the ring announcer, especially because it was our show. And Dede fought. I got to say, calling him to the ring and then being able to share the in-ring energy with him when he won was, like, the greatest feeling in the world. Like, I tried to <laughs> Google it. I don't think any other boxer has ever been announced to the ring by his mom. So I think we might have made history with that. But <laughs> <laughs> it was just, like, it was amazing. Like, 
calling him out the corner and it's like he coming out the corner war already and I'm like behind him 100% and just seeing him fight how he fought and then being able to keep bouncing holding his ear because he already knew what it was so that was just like the greatest thing ever like for sure yeah what's that feeling like for you today like being like just like when you hearing your name get called are you nervous or when you walk into the ring what's that feeling like for you I'm not nervous because I already know I won. Like, I feel like I know I won. I'm confident that I won. Yeah. You can't no, mess with yourself. Yeah. yeah. And this sport, that's how you got to feel straight up. And this one here, if you don't feel like that, there ain't no, even no point in getting in there. Yeah. And yep. before, before we get up out of here, I got three three fight predict, well, three fantasy fight questions to ask y'all and see who y'all got in those fights. All right. The first one is Bud Crawford versus Canelo Alvarez. Who y'all got? Um, I got Bud Crawford. We gonna rock with Bud all day, every day. Cause I with that one, I don't think Bud's gonna knock him out, but I think he's gonna be able to stick and move and outbox Canelo. That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. The second one, more of like both of them contenders. You got uh Richardson Hitchens. Y'all know Richardson Hitchens, right? Oh yeah. Versus Kenneth Sims Jr. Ooh. I'm gonna go with Richardson Hitchens. Yeah. That gonna go he racing. a dog. I'm just gonna ride That's with him. Yeah, yeah, it is a good one. And last but not least, uh, the uh, 126 pound division. If y'all had to put y'all money on out of these two people to be the future future stars at 126 and 130, out of Bruce Carrington and Carmel Moten, who y'all putting y'all money on? Ooh, put my money on Bruce Carrington. Oh, you going with Bruce Carrington? You know Ooh. what? I'm gonna go ahead and rock with Carmel. I'm gonna do it, cause no, they, I like Bruce. I like Bruce Carrington. I like Bruce, but yeah, did you guys see yeah. Carmel's highlight from his pro debut? Yeah, <laughs> that boy got some strength. I just feel like he' about to yeah. be the new baby tank. Like, oh yeah, one, one more, one more. I know I said three. One more, my fault. <laughs> And the last one is Shakur and Tank. You just Shakur, you made you just I'm rocking with you. I'm rocking with Shakur. Shakur. Yeah, that's all. You know what? Cool. I'm a rock. I we rock are. with Shakur heavy, but this this one is probably the hardest for me because I ain't gonna hold you up. If you Tank it. touch that chin, Shakur might go to bed. And Shakur is one of my favorite fighters. But if he catches him, especially more than once, it's gonna be about how many of them hits can he take. Now Shakur barely gets hit, but he does get hit. Like. It's a fight. He's gonna get hit. So I just hope he don't run into a shot. Other than that, ring IQ, all that, he's killing tank. Mm. You got any more questions? No, no okay. Oh, and you know what? I'm gonna throw one out there, and this is just my own personal opinion. In fact, I'm gonna ask y'all too. Keyshawn Davis or Andy Cruz? Keyshawn Davis. I'm taking Keyshawn in the pros for sure. In the pros, for sure, for sure. What you think? I ain't gonna lie. I'm I'm from Philly, and that's where Andy trained at. So my bias in me gonna go with Andy. Okay, okay. All right, that's real. But you know, I had this debate with somebody. I'm going Keyshawn Davis all day, and I want to see that one. We so up four zero though. We up four zero though. So if, even if y'all went three straight, y'all st we still got still got some catching up. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. That's that international judging, man. That's that international judging, dog. That's what that oh, yeah. is. You ain't, getting, you ain't getting no close fights with, with no Cuban. It's just not happening. Yeah. <laughs> it's not happening. For sure. Is that something, I guess a quick question, is that something kind of like y'all, uh, in the back of y'all head, like while y'all traveling to go to Ireland and England, like is the judging going to be kind of iffy or do we got to try to yeah, go out I there and kind of finish the dude? I feel like oh, yeah. they're going to be so biased. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It no, happens no, at every level from club show to international. It really does. Yeah, every every amateur uh, American amateur told me like when we go over there, we 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 damn near walk in the ring down by a point. Yeah, for real. You got to show out. You can't leave it to them judges. You got to go in there and show out. Yeah, if you don't stop them, like you got to clearly be cooking them. You know, throughout the fight, if you don't get to stop it, yeah. It's got to be so clear. And what's crazy is we've had. We've had fights that were so clear, like crystal clear, and we still didn't win. But it is what it is. They can have that. No, yeah. Like I said, it, they be treating them like they're the A-side. Like how pros got A-side, they be treating them yeah, like Yeah, and that, that's what it be. Yeah. It is what it is. Like I said, they can have that. If that makes them feel good, they can have that. 
like I said, we we appreciate y'all for hopping on. We locked in for sure. I'm, you know, I support everything y'all got going. Now, you want to shout out your uh, Instagrams or your uh, where they people can find you, and also your podcast. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. go ahead. Uh, on Instagram, you can find me at Lil Day D A E with four underscores. So Lil Day four underscores. Yeah. You can catch me on Instagram at Ashley Lauren underscore, and it's Ashley with three Y's, Lauren underscore. Um, as far as my podcast. I am going to be like kind of going through my Instagram for now. I do have a YouTube channel. I'm going to be building as I'm posting episodes and the link is in my Instagram profile. So I would say for anybody looking to support, head straight to my Instagram um, and you see everything you need from there.